We are now in lesson 13 through 14, which is re and really going into the basics of graphing. We're going to go back and talk a little bit about some of the vocab that you learned probably in about sixth grade. So let's start with um, coordinate plane. So coordinate plane is just another word for the actual graph. So ever you see it say draw a coordinate plane, something like that, it's talking about draw a graph. A point, obviously you know what a point is, but there's other names for it. So a point obviously has coordinates. And those will be your x and y coordinates. And, y, and x always comes first before y, same in the alphabet. And another thing you might hear a, a point being called is the ordered pair. So if ever you see a reference to an ordered pair, it's just talking about a point on a graph. The y-intercept is where a line crosses the y-axis. And then same thing, the x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis. The origin is just where the axes cross, which is the point zero, zero. So a lot of times you'll hear them say starting from the origin, and that's zero, zero. So there is some of just the vocab basics. So let's dive in a little bit more looking at what the solutions are to an equation. So the solution to a linear equation is all the points that fall on the line. So when you graph a linear equation, you end up with a line. So every single point along this line, not even just the whole numbers, even, even the point two, the point three, all these points along this line is a solution to that equation. So here we have an equation, y equals negative two x plus five. And this is the line that goes along with it. So we're going to kind of test out this idea that every single point along here is a, a solution to this. And if they're a solution, then they should fit into this equation and work out. So let's pick a random point. Um, maybe I like this one right here. So this is at 2, 1. So x is 2, y is 1. So let's see if it works out. So let's put it in for the equation. So 1 goes in for y, 2 goes in for x, and let's just see if it works. Well, so negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 5. Yeah, that does equal 1. So is it a solution? Yes, it is. Let's try another point. Um, maybe this one right here, 0, 5. Let's throw it in and see if it works. 5 goes in for y, 0 goes in for x. Well, 0 times negative 2, that goes away. 5 equals 5. Yes, that's a solution. Okay. So let's try ones that maybe aren't already pointed out on this one. Maybe, hmm, maybe right here. That's a 1 1.5, 2. 1 let's see if that's a solution. So 2 goes in for y. 2 times 0. 0.5 is, makes it 3, so 2 equals a negative 3 plus 5. Yep, that works too. So you can see even the points that you may not think are really points because they're not whole numbers are still a solution to any of these. Even all the points that may not be nice whole numbers are still going to be solutions. So let's do one more. How about this one down here? 3, negative 1. And vice versa, if we've picked a point that wasn't on the line, then it won't work in the equation. So now let's take a look at almost the opposite, trying to tell if a specific point is a solution to an equation. Well, there's two different ways to do it. One, we could graph the equation and just see that point is on the line, or we can throw it in mathematically and see if it works out, basically like we just did. So let's start with the first one. So let's graph this line. If we're going to graph it, we need ourselves a t, ta a t table. So x and y. I'm going to choose simple points. So maybe x is negative 1. If x is negative 1, that becomes negative 2 plus 3 is whoop, positive 1. If I put in 0, that just is 3. If I put in positive 1, that is 5. So now we have those points. Let's put them on our graph. Negative 1, 1 is right there. 0 up to 3 and then one up to five. So our line, and you can see a pattern and it always continues on because it's linear. We can see our line, it's kind of like that. 
you have a ruler, you can draw it straighter than that. Now, we need to see if the 0 0.42 works. So where is 0 0.42? Well, 4 is over here and up here. And we're wondering if this point right here is a solution to this equation. Well, if it's a solution to the equation, it should be on the line. And it's not on the line. So that tells us that this is no, not a solution. So that's the first way that you can solve to see if 0.42 is a solution to that. But maybe you don't have graph paper with you or the book didn't provide you with a graph, which happens. So, or you don't have room to draw one. The second method is just plugging the point in and see if it works. So let's try that. So I need to see if 4.2 works in here. So let's put it in. So our equation is y equals 2x plus 3. So 2 is y and 4 is x. So now we just need to work it out and see if we come up with something true. Does 2 equal 11? No, this is not true. So that means that 4, 2 is not a solution. We are now going to talk about the different types of slopes. And there's four different types of slope. There's zero, undefined, positive, and negative. And they're actually pretty simple. So let's first get down a, just an understanding of what slope is. I've already talked about slope as being, you know, the rate of change or the steepness of a line. But how do you really calculate slope? Well, slope is the rise over run. And what that really means is how much the line goes up divided by how much the line goes to the right. Another way of thinking about it is it's the change in y divided by the change in x, because y goes up and down and x goes left and right. And when you get to high school, this whole change in y, change in x thing will be rewritten as delta y over delta x because delta means change. So if you don't want to know that right now, that's totally fine, but that's how you'll see it in high school. Delta just means change. So it's a faster way of writing this whole junk right here. So now that we know really what slope is, let's take a look at some different types of slope. So if we are going to graph 1x plus 0y equals 5, we need to get some points. So we need to make a t table. Remember, we get to choose what we put in for x. So I want to choose things that will make it so it kind of comes out evenly. So I'm going to choose 0 first off. Uh, makes it nice and simple. If I put in 0 for x, that goes away. So now we have y equals, or 0y equals 5. So if we divide 5 by 0, 5 divided by 0, you aren't supposed to divide things by 0. That's technically undefined. Hmm. Okay. That's unfortunate. What if I put in, what if I put in 1? Let's put in 1. Well, now there's a 1 here. We have to subtract that from 5 so it becomes 4, but then we divide that by 0. You can't divide, divide things by 0. Uh-oh. Can we graph this at all? We can't actually. We just need to think about it in a different way from the t table. So this is actually a special equation that can be rewritten. So if we think about taking away the 0y, because you don't need anything times y, x equals 5. And that is a linear equation because there's no exponents going on. So it's just that x is always 5, no matter what. No matter what y is, no matter what we choose for y, x is always going to equal 5. So I need to find where x is 5. So remember, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. So x equals 5 right here. Oh, but x equals 5 here as well. And x equals 5 right here. And x equals 5 right here. Because it doesn't matter what y is. So if I graph this equation, you actually end up with a straight up and down line. So what kind of slope would a straight up and down line? If you look at a wall, what kind of slope is that? It's basically an impossible slope. You can't walk up a wall. So we call this slope undefined. So if you ever have an x equals sort of, sort of equation, you're going to have an undefined slope. So now let's take a look at this guy over here. Well, we have a kind of switch where there's a 0 next to x and a 1 next to y. Well, if we want to try t-table again. So I'm going to choose something for x. If I choose, I don't know, 0 for x, 0 goes in, y equals 2. Maybe I choose 1 for x, 
Well, 1 times 0 doesn't matter, it's still 2. Maybe I choose 2 for x. Well, it's still times 0, so y is still 2. So in this case, no matter what we put in, y ends up being 2. And the reason is that is we can rewrite this, write this equation as taking away x, and this just is y equals 2. So kind of similar to this one over here, where we graph where all the places where x equals 5, we need to graph all the places where y equals 2. Remember, this is the x-axis, this is the y, so y equals 2 right here, oh, and right here, and right here. So all the places that y equals 2 is all along right here. And we put arrows at the end because it goes on for forever both ways. Now, if I were on this line, what kind of slope would it seem to have? Well, it's, it's just flat. So if you're walking along the flat ground, what kind of slope is there? There is no slope. It's zero. So if you have x equals something, your slope is undefined. If you have y equals something, your slope is zero because it's going to be flat. And if you have trouble remembering that, just graph it out and you'll be able to see this is a zero slope. That's undefined. And now let's take a look at our last two types of slope. The last two types is positive and negative slope. So these are normal lines, just they kind of face up different ways. So a positive slope goes up to the right, whereas a negative slope goes up to the left. Now in class I'll be giving you um, a kind of a cheat sheet to remember these, that positive goes up to the right and negative goes up to the left, but if you don't want to remember it, you can just calculate what the actual slope is. So if I wanted to calculate what the actual slope of this one is, remember it's rise over run. So I just need to figure out how much do we go up? So let's see, he goes up one, two, three, four, and then divide it by how much he goes over. One, two, three, four, five. So he went up four and then went over five. So this slope is a positive four fifths. What about this one? Well, I need to see how much he goes up. So he goes up four. And then how much to the right he goes? Oh, but he doesn't go to the right. He goes to the left. Well, going to the left is like a, going a negative right. So he goes to the right negative five spaces. So that ends up being negative four over five. Okay. So again, if you don't want to remember the different ways that they go to mean positive or negative, you can always just calculate what the actual slope is. And I'll be giving you a cheat sheet in class to help you remember this as well. And that is the end of this lesson.